Hi, good afternoon. This is the Eclectic News Network. Today is, of course, Saturday, October 10th, 2020. Is there something big going to be happening today? If you look at numerology, 10, 10, 20, 10 plus 10 equals 20, uh, 20 minus 10 equals 10. Uh, so anybody of those that, uh, you know, the Illuminati or whoever you want to call it is into to numerology. Uh, but anyways, just giving you just a quick shout out today. Hope you're enjoying your life. Um, stop watching the news, stop watching everything and just unplug. Uh, cause what's going on right now is just crazy. The debate was just awful. Uh, Kamala Harris. I'm just going to be quite frank about it, uh, was a disaster. Uh, Pence, this is where Pence does well, where Trump doesn't. Pence is a politician. Let's just face it. Pence is a politician. Uh, Trump's not a politician. Trump is more like Robert De Niro in Raging Bull, which is not a good thing when you're a leader of the free world, in my opinion. Now, a lot of people will say, but he's Donald Trump. He's the best. We have the best economy ever, which is false. But just listen to me for a second. Kamala Harris, and I'm, I'm not saying vote for either one. I'm just seeing what I see. When I watched it, she, number one, she gaslit. She lied. Um, she did a lot of things that were not right. But the one thing that really got to me was like, um, excuse me, excuse me, I'm talking. I hated that. Nobody wants a woman to say that to you. You want a woman. Now I can understand why men go their own way. <laughs> it's because of Kamala Harris. Um, just somebody who is a spoiled rotten, doesn't have any real world experience. That's a product of affirmative action right there, which I'm totally against. I'm for people being um, hired on merit and experience and the ability to do the job. Doesn't matter what color your skin is. But these people crack me up and the fly on Pence's head who cares like okay I'm flying his head that was the biggest thing of the debate because she lost the debate so much the mainstream media had to do something other than uh, you know talk about how bad she did they had to say Pence had a fly in his head this, this is really where media is today it's quite quite sad um, so with the election only so many you know a few weeks away a lot of people are like well you know, Donald Trump has lost and you know, Joe Biden's going to win and, you know, all this stuff. He's up by 25 points. Well, they said the same thing in 2016. I still think Trump will win. <coughs> um, not in a landslide, but I think it's going to be a little bit closer. The reason why is his COVID diagnosis is probably with the way he's playing around with it. Uh, with the, I feel better than I did 20 years ago. Well, yeah, because you were on a steroid. Uh, when I had a severe pneumonia five years ago, um, it was really bad uh, it, for some reason it was just I was under a lot of stress and I lived with a smoker downstairs and I had really bad uh, pneumonia in 2015 um, they gave me a steroid and after a week of taking it to clear it up and I felt better I got over it I took antibiotics because it was bacterial of course yeah you're, when you feel like you're on death's door and you feel like you're not feeling good you, of course you're gonna feel better than you have in 20 years when you give somebody a steroid, of course, they, you know, if you give the old cold and sinus medication with the pseudoephedrine, which is basically ephedrine, of course you're going to feel great. Like I did that the one time a few years ago when I, I didn't have a cold, but I usually rarely have colds or I rarely get sick. But the one time I had to work and I had a shift that I couldn't call off and I, I had a hundred fever, but I still worked. Well, I took Advil, cold and sinus with the pseudoephedrine. It was terrible. Number one, it made me angry, very aggressive and all that stuff. Number two, it made me feel like I was just like ready just to kick somebody's butt. I didn't like it. But anyways, so he, yeah, he's like, I kicked the COVID thing in five days. There's nothing to worry about. There's no virus, you know, everything's fine. And I see where Trump's going with it. He's trying to be positive. He's trying to get the country in the right direction. I get where he's coming from. I don't agree with his methods. I think it's not really, it's gonna backfire on him. But I see what he's doing. He's a salesman. And, you know, he is a good salesman. I've read his books. You know, he is a good salesman. As a politician, uh, he's not so much. Uh, maybe that's part of his luster. But I, I would say that uh, it's going to hurt him with the middle-aged women. 
uh, the June Cleavers because June Cleavers are a little more nervous Nellies. There's something about an archetype of a 45 to 65 year old that basically literally, you know, they, they kind of say, well, I don't want to get anybody sick, which, yeah, I understand that. Selective quarantine, I'm all for it. But these people literally think that, well, it's gonna affect my mother. Well, of course, they did this by design because it was a virus that was a cold virus. So the cold virus, what they did was, it, it, everybody's guilty because there's viruses everywhere. I mean, there's viruses in fruit, there's viruses in, in food, there's viruses in your nose, there's viruses in your body. But your body and your immune system have a way to fight it. So, turn off the media. I mean, but, you know, watch my channel, of course. <laughs> but, no, I'm just saying, turn off the news. Seriously, stop watching it. I'm being honest, your health is going to be so much better because I think a lot of it is that people want to watch something because they're looking for hope. And the only hope is, is that you better your own life, get out in the sunshine, it's a nice day today, uh, you know, take a hike or, you know, do ever do some camping, you know, go to the park or something and just, you know, if you have an SUV, an overhang, you know, put up by a picnic table, you know, lounge in the sun a little bit, get out in the nature. They want you stuck inside your house with the TV on so that way they can just give you, just pound you over the head, pound you over the head with fear. That's their goal. It's all about fear. And I was falling into that trap and after a couple of days of just not even watching it, I feel so much better. I felt better than I have in 20 years. Anyways, but next subject is of course the economy. Stimulus, no stimulus. Does it frankly really matter? No, it doesn't. You know, our biggest problem right now is not COVID-19. Yeah, that's a, it's a real virus, I get it. But the biggest problem is the $27 trillion in debt and the 3.2 trillion stimulus or whatever trillion, what's a trillion between friends? It doesn't, it doesn't even matter anymore. It doesn't. It is insane. Number one, by keeping these lockdowns now, you know, keeping all these restrictions, wear a mask, social distance, social distancing, all that stuff. I always do it in a gay voice. Social distancing, because people, <laughs> because it sounds so ridiculous. Um, you know, your, your body has innate immunity. I've already gone that nauseum. I'm not gonna continue with it, but, uh, and people don't realize it's gonna kill estimated over 200 million people in the third world. It's gonna start from the death. There's already 40 million starving in the third world. And I've heard people say, well, who cares? Well, that's a big deal. Uh, because once they ruin the first world, uh, we go into a depression, the third world starts to death. And that's the elite's plan all along, is to starve out the third world, get migrant caravans up into the first world, depopulate it that way by getting rid of whites, because whites are inherently evil, even though 98% of the inventions have come from whites. Uh, I don't care, you can call me racist all you want, but that is a fact. Um, number two, uh, you, you know, like I said, there's plenty of people out there that are of all races and all colors that are very intelligent, that can actually do a lot of things, uh, that don't need welfare, that don't need uh, a handout. But yeah, it should be there for people that need it if they do need it, but a lot of people abuse the system. So what's gonna happen? Well, number one, you're gonna have people, of course, you're gonna have the age gap, the baby boomers are gonna die out very soon. Uh, pretty much 1946 to 64. So anybody born between then, the next, this, this decade's when they die out. So the last early retirement for baby boomers will be in 2026, when the ones born in 1964 will be in for early retirement. That's when I see the economy recovering for people that are Gen Xers, Gen Yers, Gen Zs, uh, millennials, that's when the economy will improve. So you're gonna pretty much have another seven to eight year depression uh, for that, that demographic, okay? You know, generationally, the gap in wealth has been 42 trillion worth of household wealth for the baby boomers. Gen Xers, five and a half, or sorry, 10.3 trillion, I think it was. And I think millennials only have three, 4.9 trillion. So there's a big gap. It's almost 10 times the amount for baby boomers. And that's because I've gone in before in detail about how they use the high interest rates in the late 70s go down in the 80s to where they the asset bubble and prices go up like they have. The average price for a house in 1980 was I think $49,000. The average price now is almost 329000 
So, you know, if you own four houses back then and you have them now, you're a millionaire. Now, if you're a millennial, you're screwed. <laughs> so, it's pretty amazing how people will really look at it and, uh, <sighs> what's gonna happen? I don't know. But be prepared and realize that you have a lot of potential inside you um, and give it to people and be helpful to others and love each other in a good way. Uh, stay positive, not, you know, not in the Pollyanna, you know, we're all gonna hold, the, uh, hold hands and sing the Coke song. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, you know, do something, you know, have a project. You know, t today I'm gonna look on building a van uh, to, 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 to go travel next year. Cause it just, just something to keep your mind off of stuff. You know, it's like our build a cabinet or something like that. That's what you need to do and just be productive. Because if you're productive and you're building and you're doing things, that is what's going to get you through this. I'm Brian Blood for the Eclectic News Network. Stay tuned and don't forget to click subscribe. And you guys have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.